What's going on everyone? Brian Matias here. So last week I released a video called three things that I used to do in Adobe Lightroom that I would never do today. And I wanna thank all of you who sent me so many positive comments and emails, uh, just it was really well received. And, and that made me feel really good because uh, that video was all about introspection, uh, learning to look inside, learning to see the kind of photographer you used to be in order to grow into the photographer that you wanna become. I think that's really important. That's something that we as photographers need to do a lot more of and more often. So today's video is not about Lightroom, but about Adobe Photoshop. Now here's the thing, I've used Lightroom far longer than I've used Adobe Photoshop, even though Photoshop's been around longer. The thing is, if I'm being honest, is Photoshop is an intimidating product. It is gigantic. I mean, people make entire careers learning and teaching Photoshop. So for a while, Lightroom just fit the bill for me. It was able to get me to where I wanted to go. But in talking about introspection and the process of looking through all of the photos that I took, you know, 10, 11, 12 years ago, it's immediately apparent to me that a lot of the photos just kind of look the same because I really only, I was limited to the tools in Adobe Lightroom's develop module. Not that there's anything wrong with them. They're super powerful, but there comes a time where you may reach a plateau where you're like, you know what? I kind of want to be able to do more with my photos. And really that's where Photoshop comes in. I mean, Photoshop opens up this entire world of opportunity. So in this video, we're going to jump over to the computer and we're just going to work on one photo. We're not going to go too crazy. And on this photo, I'm going to illustrate three different things that I can do to it that I cannot do in Lightroom uh, that can just really refine the look of the photo. And I'm not gonna go too deep into these tools because in all honesty, I mean, each of these things I can make an entire video on or an entire course. I mean, there's so much to it. So I don't want you to freak out, don't worry, just watch the video. And if anything, even if you don't do anything in Photoshop, but as long as you can walk away with that idea that, you know what, I've you know been this, you know, working in this one product, this one application for so long, I need to start reviewing how that has affected my photography. You know, is, are my photos just kind of looking the same? And if that's the case, if all you take from this video is like, all right, maybe I should at least just kind of, let me launch Photoshop and just try a few things, then that's perfect, then that's great because you just need to take that first step. Once you get into Photoshop and you start exploring, uh, trust me, things will start to make sense. And it is a big program, but you know, anything that's really powerful, uh, it requires time and it's worth the investment. So let's jump over the computer and uh, we'll have some fun. All right, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019 and this photo is essentially taken straight out of camera. The only thing I did was I hit auto uh, to fix the tone and the color, but otherwise the composition is exactly uh, as it was taken. I took it in 2015, so almost four years ago, and it was with the Sony A7R and the Sony A-mount 16 millimeter F2.8 fisheye with uh, an A-mount to uh, full frame E-mount adapter. And you can see one of the caveats of using a fisheye, especially vertically, if your camera and tripod aren't are level with the horizon, is that you get this gnarly uh, curve, this radial distortion. And that right there is Scott. He was a workshop attendee. He showed up uh, a day early and shot with us, uh, you know, before the workshop started and we caught a pretty decent sunset. So um, the thing is, there are a lot of things, obviously, that Photoshop does that Lightroom can't do, but both of them have uh, spot healing. And spot healing is one of those things that, you know, if you're like me, you use it a thousand times a day. Um, but I genuinely believe that Photoshop's results are far superior to Lightroom's. I don't know if it's the fact that Photoshop has better content aware or what, but let's go ahead. We're going to do a an Adobe taste test right now. Uh, so here, okay, we have this photo in Photoshop, but we're going to jump over to Lightroom. And this is the exact same photo and I've got the spot healing tool selected. So let's go ahead here and make our selection around Scott. And you can see it is not very good. I mean, we can work with it. We can kind of, you know, do a few things and it's just making it worse. Um, but this is, you know, sometimes it's good. Like if I undo and let's try another one, you know, I'm not saying it's always terrible because I mean, it's not. Um, and you can see that's a little bit better. It's a little smudgy and stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll move over to Photoshop here. I'm going to select the spot healing tool from the toolbar. I also want to make sure that the content aware is selected. And 
you will see if you press and hold, there are several tools. I'm on the spot healing brush with content aware. So it's something to consider there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, before we do anything, I'll just duplicate this layer. We'll work off of a dupe layer and I am going to make my selection around Scott, just like we did in Lightroom, uh, like that. And so you can see it has this weird artifact here, but everything else is really nice. So this is an easy fix. I mean, there you go, like watch. Scott, no Scott. Compared to here, let's do this one more time and see what we get. So let's just go there. And that is just, I mean, that's a mess. And yeah, sure, I can hit H and we can kind of resample where we're gonna kind of heal from. And it does a decent job, but this is far superior. And then of course we can go ahead here and just kind of get rid of these little gnarly notches in the sand and the salt rather. So, you know, there we go. And I, I do genuinely believe that uh, Photoshop's spot healing with content awareness, it does a better job of analyzing the surrounding pixels to give you that kind of seamless look. So now let's move on. The first thing I wanted to show you was the spot healing. Uh, and that just kind of makes sense, right? Actually, let's get rid of that right there too. The next thing is, this is just something that I would say Photoshop is amazing at. So I wanna fix this horizon. I'm gonna go ahead here. Let's just kind of, what, what can we do? Well, I mean, yeah, sure. In Lightroom, for instance, let's see what happens. We'll close this and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit auto. And look what it does. I mean, it kind of, you can see that it tries to constrain the crop and we can kind of go ahead here and fix that. Um, but for the most part, it really sacrifices the composition. You lose a lot of that foreground. So here, what I can do, which is really fantastic, is I can go to edit, transform, and then I'm gonna select warp. And I'm just gonna start massaging the photo. So I'm gonna start dragging downward and you see what it's doing? It's like, it's like magic, the way I'm able to uh, interact with the photo. And I can grab these handlebars here, um, and I'm just getting it to a rough place where it's level. So somewhere around there. Then I'll hit the check mark. And let's just, I mean, from there to there, and let's quickly look at all the foreground stuff we have here, and it's like mostly gone. You see, we kind of get this top part of this geometric pattern but here we have the whole thing. Now, what I'll do is I'll take the ruler. You wanna make sure that the ruler is visible. Um, and if you don't have that, you'll go to view and then select rulers. And then I'm gonna click in the ruler and drag down to get a guide. And so this is just a straight horizontal guide. And I'll just use this. I'll go back to edit, transform, warp. And I'll just make sure that, you know, I have the horizon kind of level so well not kind of level definitely level and the guide helps me visualize that so kind of like right there and we'll hit the check mark and then if i want i can go to view and then we can just clear that guide right there and now that i'm looking at it this right side needs to be fixed a little bit so uh, the other way that you can get to your transform is if you hit command or control t to get to transform this little button right here is the warp and now I can just go ahead here and just kind of straighten that little right piece up just like that and then hit the check mark and we are good to go. And so just to kind of again, one more time, that's what we started with. That's what we ended with. And if we compare this horizon with Lightrooms, I mean, we have a straight horizon as well, but we've sacrificed a lot of the composition because we don't have that warp capability um, as we do here. Now, you know, I can spend another 10 minutes really dialing in the horizon. But for the sake of keeping the video going, let's just assume that this is actually perfect because uh, when I look at it, I can probably straighten it a little bit more, but I don't want to spend that much time. I think you get the idea, the benefit of using the transform tool in Photoshop as opposed to uh, what you have in Lightroom. Now, the third thing is this is kind of, this is really massive because there are so many things you can do using adjustment layers. So an adjustment layer, you'll see here, there is an adjustment panel and you have all of these different options. And these are essentially 
adjustments that you can apply to a given layer. If you don't have the adjustments panel visible, just go to window and then select adjustments and it'll be over there. Now, the first one is black and white. So with black and white, you know, I can just click on black and white here. And this is something I've had conversations about with other photographers where maybe Adobe did start improving Lightroom's black and white conversion where you would go in over here and you would scroll up and click black and white and you'd have this conversion here. Let's actually just look. So here's, this is black and white standard. So looking at the black and white mix here, this is standard black and white. And it's looking pretty similar to what we have in Photoshop with the black and white adjustment layer. Um, but this has some of the color values changed in the properties. Uh, these are the default values that come into it. And in Lightroom, you know, we can go ahead here, we can take the target adjustment tool and, you know, maybe on the blues, really darken those blues and even bring in the purples uh, and the aqua. And that's okay. But with nice thing about Photoshop is you have a lot of different options. So there's kind of an, a targeted adjustment tool too. It's kind of a finger with those two arrows. If I click in the blues and drag into the left, you know, that's okay. And I can kind of adjust the reds and the yellows. So, you know, we, these are things that we can do in Lightroom. No big deal, right? I mean, these are, again, I can go into Lightroom and, you know, start adjusting the yellows and the reds, just like, just like we did in Photoshop. However, let's say, you know, I just, I want to try something different that, that right there, that's the sentiment that where you stop uh, being able to work in Lightroom and you have to go into Photoshop is when you say, you know what, I want to try something different. Let's say here, I want to take this black and white adjustment layer and maybe, you know, drop that opacity to let a little bit of that color come through just a little bit, something you absolutely cannot do in Lightroom. You there, It's not really a layered workflow. Uh, or I want to go and say, you know what? I like the black and white adjustment, but I actually want to leverage one of these blending modes, something like maybe soft light, which adds this really nice, rich contrast. And, you know, I can further drop that opacity down. Or let's say I want to take a different route altogether. Let's say I want to use something really fun, like a gradient map, which is, I mean, kind of, kind of, kind of like split toning, but really not. It's actually a lot more powerful in Photoshop. So, you know, let's turn off that layer there, we'll go back to our the base layer here, and I'm gonna add a gradient map, except instead of kind of a black and white gradient map, let's say I go here um, and I select this color, and then I'll just double click on the black. So what I'm saying here is uh, whatever color I have in, that I have selected here in the color picker, I want that to be applied to the black. So, you know, as I, you see here, the higher I go up on this color picker, the stronger that saturation is. So here we have, um, if I go to say the blues, for example, somewhere here and I make it, make a kind of a, I don't know, kind of a dark blue. And then I go to the highlights, the white point, and I'll go to something like that, like a yellow. And let's just click okay, just for, just to see. So obviously this is awful. This is not something we would normally do um, unless you were going for this kind of uh, interesting screen print look. But what I can do is go to the blending modes again, just like we did with the black and white adjustment layer and select luminosity, which gives me this really interesting look. Again, I can go and start dialing back the opacity of the layer. I can go here back to the gradient map and start manipulating the color some more. And you get to see kind of like a live preview. And then of course, let's just say this is the look we want, but I don't want it really in the foreground. Well, again, this is something that you cannot do at all in Lightroom. I can just take this layer mask here. I'll select G for the gradient and I'll just drag upward and boom, I essentially remove that effect from the entire foreground and I kept it into the sky. You can see what it did there. And so you can see like just how many things you can do in Photoshop. And again, these are, I was just skimming the surface and really, you know, kind of going uh, off the cuff, shooting from the hip with these edits. It's a lot easier in Lightroom to, to dial things in because you have all of these different absolute values. But with Photoshop, 
uh, there's a lot of nuance and there are a lot of controls that you can manipulate. There are all different ways that you can blend these adjustment layers together. Um, and there are different filters that you can apply again, you know, like we can go ahead here and just add a blur, just like I did in uh, the video that I showed you a few weeks ago, if I wanted to apply an Orton blur. So here we'll go uh, and enter in 42, change that blending mode to soft light, drop that opacity like to maybe eight or nine, and then we can add a levels adjustment layer and add a little bit of contrast off the whim, just things that, that if you want to, to say replace the sky or add motion, things that you can do in Photoshop that you really can't do in Lightroom. So again, the whole name of the game here is to take the time and look inward and think like, all right, am I ready to move to that next level? Do I want to start uh, looking at different ways, new ways to work with my photos? And I think you'll be really surprised with the results. So, you know, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found some like interesting ideas and inspiration of like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and try Photoshop now with my photos. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. It means a lot to me. And be sure to hit the subscribe button with that bell to get notified for all future videos. Uh, if there are things you wanna see or you have questions about the video, leave them in the comments below. All right, everyone, I will see you on the next one.